We have a Jamboard task that we want you to do. Step 1. Watch the video above. In fact, you're watching this video right now. So good job, you're doing number 1. While you watch, pay attention to Mr. Dale Campos' steps to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and watch how, we, how I solve this problem. After this video, you'll be going to Jamboard to answer a question. In this video, we're going to talk about how to compare fractions, and in this example, two fractions, using a number line. In fact, there are many ways to compare two fractions, but for this video, we'll be using a number line to help us compare. What does it mean to compare? It means we are trying to figure out whether this is bigger, this fraction on the left is bigger, or this fraction on the right is bigger. In fact, it looks like we need to decide which of these inequality signs, this sign or this sign, we need to decide which of these inequality signs is correct. Now, to help me with this problem, I'm a little worried that when I draw my lines, it'll be hard to see where these two fractions are going to be. I'm afraid that I might be drawing too many lines. So what I'm going to do to help me is I'm actually going to do my work on two number lines. Meaning I'll use this number line on top and I will use the number line on the bottom to help me out as well. All right, here are my arrows on the side. Looks like the first fraction I need to do is negative two over three. Hmm, I'm used to doing positive numbers on the number line, but negatives, I'm a little nervous about that. So, I know the denominator is three, so I am going to go ahead and cut this whole piece from zero to one. I'll cut it into three parts. So one, one piece, two pieces, three pieces. I have cut this whole into three parts. Okay? But this is negative two over three. I know this is 1 over 3. I know this is positive 2 over 3. How could I do the same thing with negative fractions? Well, it's actually the same idea, but going backwards in a way. Watch this. Here's negative 1. Let me say negative 1 is over here. Let's pretend negative 1 is over there. And again, I want you to imagine that there's one whole piece. There's one whole piece going from 0 all the way to negative 1. So here's one whole piece. I'm going to cut this whole piece into three parts because of this 3. There we go. Now I'm just going to go straight down so I can cut this whole into three parts. The next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to jump from zero and start counting backwards. So like, I want to know what fraction goes here. Well, we're now in the negatives because we are on the left of zero. And so this is negative one over three because of this picture where I've shaded in one out of three but it's in the negative side. And it's right over here, it stops right here, so I'll go straight down. What fraction is this? Well, if I shade this in, this fraction has to be negative two over three. And guess what? Now I know where negative two over three is, so I'll put a dot right here. A dot is a good way 
to tell people where negative 2 over 3 is. So I'll mark it right here with a dot. Notice I did all of this work on one number line. And I don't want to do any more work on that number line because I want to clearly remember where negative 2 over 3 is. So instead of just doing my work on one number line, we're now going to put this on the second number line just to make it easier on my eyes. So now I know 0 is right here. And I'm just going to go straight down. I'll put 0 here too. So if 0 is right here, 0 also has to be here to match it. Now, I need to know where negative 3 over 4 is. Hmm, I'm still confused by negatives. So I'm just going to look at positives first. Because if I do positives, it might, me, it might help me do the negatives easier or easily. Here is positive 1 because 1 is right here. Now, I know my denominator is 4. So let me cut this into four pieces. If I imagine this as a whole piece right here, I can cut this in half. Now I have half of a whole. Now if I do my cuts right here, if I cut this in half and cut this piece in half, now I have four pieces. And I can just go straight up. Here's one over four. 1 over 4. What about here? What's this? This is 2 over 4. Why? Because if I color these in, if I start from 0 and jump all the way here, I've jumped 2 over 4. What about here? This has to be 3 over 4. Cool. Now I know where 3 over 4 is in the positives, but now I just need to figure out where is negative 3 over 4 in the negatives. I know that negative 1 is right here, so if I line it up correctly, negative 1 will be here. Now, I still need to figure out where negative 3 over 4 is, so I will do the same thing. I just like using dif different colors because it makes things easier to see. So I need negative 3 over 4. Well, let me cut this into four pieces. And keep in mind that every time I'm cutting something, I'm cutting a hole. So I'm cutting this one whole box into four pieces. There we go. Now let me just line this up. Right here is where negative 1 over 4 is. Right here is negative 2 over 4. Right here is where negative 3 over 4 is. Now I can put a dot. And a dot is our way to mark where negative 3 over 4 is. We're almost done because now we need to make a decision. Let me use the highlighter. Our decision is, let me erase this. Now we need to make a decision. Does the alligator face this way or the alligator face this way? Remember that the alligator is going to always eat the number that is bigger. So which number is bigger? This number or this number? Hmm. I'm still kind of confused. But if I look at this, looks like this number is a little bit more on the left. And this number is a little bit more to the right. Here's my number on the left. And if I go straight up, 
See how this number is a little bit more on the right, and this number is a little bit more on the left. Wait a minute. I still don't know where the alligator goes. Well, keep in mind that numbers put zero on the left. And I want you to compare it to one. So let's just pay attention to zero and one. What's bigger, numbers on the left or numbers on the right? Numbers on the right are always bigger. That means numbers on the left are always smaller. And this is when we're talking about number lines. Numbers on the right are always bigger on the number line. Numbers on the left are always smaller. What's bigger, zero or one? One is bigger because it's on the right of zero. Numbers on the right are always bigger. Well, now we can look at the confusing fractions. This number is on the right. It's more to the right than this number. This blue dot is more on the right than this purple dot. So guess what? Negative 2 over 3 is bigger. Numbers on the right are always bigger. Bigger numbers are always on the right. So what should the alligator eat? This negative 2 over 3 or the negative 3 over 4? The alligator should eat the number on the right because the number on the right is bigger and wants more. So the correct answer is this one because the alligator is facing here. All right, so this is the correct answer. Thank you for watching.